Hello. Today I want to talk about acids and bases. I want to go over an introduction uh, of what we're going to think about um, and show you sort of the beginnings of, of acids and bases and we'll continue our discussion of this in class tomorrow. Um, the key about acids and bases is they are one of the fundamental um, concepts in organic chemistry that carries over directly into biochemistry. So we're going to use this idea of acids and bases uh, throughout the next two semesters and then if you continue on in biochemistry it's going to be a critical component of how you think about things in biochemistry. Right? And what we want to do is identify acidic protons. Given any molecule, figure out what protons are acidic. Uh, hopefully figure out which is the most acidic. Um, also given any molecule, figure out which atoms are basic. And again, which atom is going to be the most basic. Uh, and then we want to be able to predict reactions that will occur when you combine an acid and a base and know that they're going to give you a conjugate acid and a conjugate base and know what the structures of those compounds are. So to begin talking about this, we need to have in mind our, our generic acid and generic base equations, right? And so that when you're thinking about a molecule that's an acid, right, you want to think about some molecule that has a proton. And the molecules we're going to look at are going to have many protons. And so we need to look at each proton individually and figure out which one is going to uh, be the most acidic. Right? And again, an acid, remember, is a proton donor. So which one's going to donate a proton most easily? Right? And usually we think about it reacting with water. That's not always going to be the case this semester. Uh, but definitely in Chem 111 and 118, we thought about acids reacting with water. And that's a fine way for us to think about things right now. So we have some acid. It reacts with water. Um, and all that happens is that water, which is the base, is going to grab the proton, leave the electrons on A, right? So again, water is going to act as the base here. That's going to give us A minus. And again, A minus is what we refer to as the conjugate base, right? And since water has gained a proton, it gives you the hydronium ion, that's going to be the conjugate acid. And again, remember, the acid yields the conjugate base. The base yields the conjugate acid, right? Um, and what we're going to spend our time thinking about, trying to figure out how things behave reactivity, is we're going to focus on the structure of the conjugate base, right? We do that because the conjugate base, if you start with a neutral acid, the conjugate base is charged. And we spent a lot of time over the last couple of classes talking about charge delocalization using resonance, right? And that's the strategy we're going to use to look at the conjugate base to figure out how stable it is. Over how many atoms is the charge delocalized? Which atoms have the negative charge on it? Is it an electronegative atom like oxygen, or is it something that's less electronegative like carbon, right? Similarly, when we're looking at a generic base equation, we're going to have a base. And again, I hope it's clear as you think about this that to spot an atom that's going to be a base, it's any atom that has a lone pair, right? That's all we need because a base is a proton acceptor. To accept a proton, you must have a lone pair. So we have an atom in a molecule that has a lone pair. That's going to be our base. It's going to react with water. What's going to happen? Base is going to accept a proton, so it's going to pull a proton from water. Electrons go on to the oxygen, so we end up with water acting, in this case, as the acid, the proton donor. The base turns into the conjugate acid, and water turns into the conjugate base. All right? And in this case, we're going to focus our efforts on looking at the conjugate acid. All right? And the conjugate acid is going to be positively charged now, and we're going to use the skills we've uh, we've studied in resonance delocalization to look at how is that positive charge delocalized, which atoms contain the positive charge, right? And so these are the skills we're going to use. Again, clearly, when we have a generic acid or a generic base, the equations are different. The acid is going to give us a negatively charged conjugate base. The base is going to give us a positively charged conjugate acid. But we're going to use similar strategies to figure out which of those is going to be favored. Uh, which atom is going to be the best base, which proton is going to generate the most stable conjugate base, things like that. Right? When you're thinking about this, when you think about examples of organic acids and bases, right, so a standard organic acid, 
is acetic acid. Acetic acid uh, is in vinegar. Um, and acetic acid is an example of a carboxylic acid. Right? The name of the functional group tells you that it's an acid. Right? An example of an organic base. triethylamine. Okay. And I want to just look at right now why this one is going to be a good acid and that one's going to be a good base. Right? And so when we think about acetic acid acting as an acid, what's going to happen? Again, water is going to act as the base. It's going to pull that proton off. And we end up with a carboxylate anion, right? And one question might be, all right, this is, um, you know, acetic acid acting as an acid. How does that compare if we had something like ethanol acting as an acid? In both cases, we have a proton on oxygen that we're losing and we yield a negative charge on oxygen. Right? Which of these is going to be the more stable conjugate base? Hopefully this is clear as we think about resonance. That in the acetate anions case, we have a more stable conjugate base because we have a delocalized charge. Right? We can draw the resonance hybrid. So over here we have a localized charge. And here we have a delocalized charge, right? And so what we're seeing is that this delocalized charge is the more stable conjugate base. This one is the less stable conjugate base, right? And the thing to remember is that the more acidic proton yields the less the more acidic proton yields the more stable conjugate base. All right? So let me make sure I write that out correctly. Alright, so loss of the more acidic proton yields. the more stable conjugate base. Right? More stable, again, means less reactive, lower in energy. Right? So we're going from a higher energy acid to a lower energy conjugate base. Right? So this is the more reactive acid and we're going to the less reactive conjugate base. Over here, we have the less reactive acid going to the more reactive conjugate base. Okay. And similarly, if we looked at this organic base and we compared it to water, right? again, if we just react both with water acting as bases, right? again, a base is going to be a proton acceptor, so it's going to pick up a proton. Those are our two conjugate acids, right? And both of these are localized charges, right? So localized, localized. So it's not about delocalization in this case. In this case, it's about which atom has the positive charge. So we're looking at a positive charge on nitrogen versus a positive charge on oxygen. 
knowing our electronegativity values, we know that nitrogen is going to be more stable with a positive charge than oxygen. Right? So O is more electronegative. Right? This is less stable. Right? N is less electronegative. This is more stable. Right? The stronger base is going to yield the more stable conjugate acid. Right? So let's write that one down. Stronger base yields the more stable conjugate acid. Right? Same idea when we're thinking about most acidic proton. Okay? Stronger base. More stable conjugate acid. This is the weaker base. It's going to be the less stable conjugate acid. Okay? So, you have plenty of opportunities to practice these sorts of analyses and the problems that you're doing for class tomorrow, and we'll spend most of class talking about these sorts of things uh, and answering the questions that you still have.